Well, hello, guys. Now you probably can't see me. My straw hat on there. How about now? Let us talk about this new offering from FX. Now, it's, uh, I don't know what they named it yet. It's the Panthera in its smaller form. This gun, of course, is the little brother to... So the littler version here, what's different? Well, of course, you don't have your bottle back here anymore. Move to the front here, which means that that rail that was underneath there is now gone. The gun has a 300 millimeter barrel. That's pretty dang short, that's 12 inches. This gun has more in common with the Wildcat BT than it does with its big brother, Panthera. And I'll bet that if you're watching this video, you're kind of torn between these two. If I'm being honest, after doing this review, I'm torn too. They're both great. This one's a little better at some things. This one's a little better at some things. Let's keep moving and we'll piece it all together here. So first, let's talk about just briefly what makes the Panthera different. This is not a shroud. This is a plenum. So this is high pressure air here up to 250 bar. That goes through a regulator. Then it goes into here. From here, it goes to make the shot. So, because the regulator is between the bottle air and the plenum air, that means that the plenum air always has the same pressure. I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know. If you want to see more on this, uh, watch Matt Dubber's video. He did a great job of showing how this gun is different. Because the plenum's in here, and there effectively is no shroud, the gun barks. And that's pretty normal for little guns. Actually, it's kind of one of the Achilles heels of all small guns. They all barked. You really had to put a lot of shroud on the end of them, a lot of moderator on the end of them, to shut it up. This gun was the same as well, in a little noisy bugger. But, unlike those other small guns, simply putting on a, a modest sized moderator, this is a Donnie FL Tatsu, probably my favorite moderator that he makes. This shut it right up. Um, it went from crack to thump. And uh, here's the big thing. Here's what makes it kind of cool. Here's why I wanted to have it. It's got a folding stock on it and a dang nice one at that. So, the question, the word we all like to use, is it a backpacker? Well, I think it's just a little bit too chunky to be a backpacker, to be honest with you. Uh, more of a duffel bagger, and I have used it as such. It's kind of cool, actually, to, to not have to take a gun case. You just uh, throw it in between the clothes <laughs> in the duffel bag. I can go take it to grandma's house or something like that. And uh, and then you're more clandestine <laughs> about the animals you're going to be greasing while you're there. So, you know, if somebody sees you carry a, a rifle case in in a residential upscale area where, you know, people are people. And they just carry in a duffel bag with your clothes for that weekend. That's great. That's pretty cool. My small duffel, I had to take the moderator off. My larger duffel didn't have to. And yeah, you can get it in a backpack probably. A big backpack. I think of it more as a duffel bagger. On top of here is the new Helix HD 2 to 16 power. The reticle in this, oh, what's it called? Ah, crud, let me put it up on the screen here. I can't remember. It's a BDC reticle, basically, a, a drop compensator reticle. And it's really clean. I didn't think I would dig it. I thought it'd be too minimal. But for this gun, this platform, I think it's just, it's just perfect. You just see so much. But being lower power, you can dial it all the way down to have a huge field of view. It's a fast, fast scope. Get on target fast, take your shot fast. I dig it. I really do like this scope. I think I want another one. Uh, this scope I think retails about 580, I think. The gun, I don't know. I don't know what that retails for. If I'm guessing, somewhere between 15 and 2. When the gun was shipped to me, it had a 300 uh, cc bottle on it. You know, aesthetically, it looked, it looked good. It looked like it should look. But when you put this on here, then you had the smaller bottle here and you kind of had this long nose look to it. So I thought, you know, what the hell? I put on a 500, excuse me, a 480, I guess they are, bottle, which comes right to the, the edge of the moderator there. I think it looks proper, don't you? I think this is how this gun should look. So I'm hoping that they offer it to you in this configuration. The rail on the Panthera, you may not know, is actually a 20 MOA built in, which is kind of nice. Now I have uh, FX no limit mounts on here because that's what I had. But you don't need to have the adjustable mounts anymore if you have this, uh, you know, 20 or 30 MOA uh, downslope rail on it. And if you optically center it, 
put your scope mounts on, put it on here. It's dang close to zeroed at 50 yards. I like that. The less you can stress your scope, the better. But I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this scope per se. A lot of other channels focus specifically on scopes. I'm looking at you when I... <laughs> So besides the moderator and the bottle, I also switched out the trigger. Um, you may notice this probably beaming red from when you're looking at me. This is made by Ernest Rowe from FXUSA. He works for FXUSA. He's their you know, primary engineer, technician. The guy who knows how to fix guns. And Newman, hey Newman, yeah, I think he's helping him out. Newman got me this trigger blade. I like it a lot because it has this little tiny uh, protrusion right here. And what that does is it gives you better feedback as you're pulling the trigger. Now, if you had a gun with like, like an eight pound trigger, like you just went and bought a 1022 or 597 or some 22, they have lawyer triggers in them. Nine pound pull on my 597 and about seven or eight pound on my 1022. This ain't gonna do you much good. It's just gonna drive, <laughs> drive into your finger. But if you have a very light trigger, especially less than a pound, this can give you really good feedback by pushing in the, the meat of your finger. So, uh, link for them down in the description too. Other than that, other than that, <laughs> other than everything, no. Other than those few changes, um, the gun pretty much is as is. It arrived regulated at about 130 bar. I brought that up a bit because when FXA contacted me about this gun, they said, want to have a look at it? And I said, yeah, sounds great. They said, because of the short barrel, it really isn't a slug shooter. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about pellets first. So pellet accuracy, yeah, uh, no big surprise there. Um, let's have a look at that target. So here we have uh, five different pellets. And as you can see, the two winners on here are the FX Atomic Pellets, so the 15.9 grain, and the JSB 18.1 grain. Both of those were shot at 900 feet per second. Remember that. We're going to come back to that number. Uh, they all shot pretty well. Two of them definitely excelled above the rest. And it's actually kind of curious because FX Atomic Pellets are just Hades pellets. They're just from a dedicated press. In other words, FX has their press at the JSB factory, and they probably tested a bunch of presses and then see which one was the best in their barrels and then said, that's our press. It's cool. It's cool to actually see that it works. It isn't just bull crap, you know? So let's have a look at them as I shot them just, I don't know, a half hour ago. Um, accuracy is right there. So yeah, tick that box and just move on. Move on to the next part. The part that I really want to talk to you about, the part I've been, all you needed to ever do to motivate me uh, to work my ass off is to tell me it can't be done. So, <laughs> so FXUSA tells me it really isn't a slug shooter. We tried a whole bunch. And Rolf uh, from AirTac Hunting, he said the same thing. I think you saw, probably he made a video very recently, uh, insane headshots or something. I don't know. Like incredible headshots. He used a really good adjective. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, Rolf used uh, H&N Barracudas in that video because he couldn't get the gun to shoot slugs either. It, well, mine wasn't that bad. They weren't shotgunning, so to speak, but the groups were two to four inches at 50 yards. That's not going to do it, right? We're not going to be happy with that. Just might as well shoot pellets if that's what it's going to do. Well, I have quite a few slugs on hand, and, uh, and I am going to put them all through this gun. Javelins, the Wildmans, the Zans, the H&Ns, they all were all over the place. Um, the best group I could probably get out of them was maybe two inches. That might have been the, the Javelin uh, 23 grain. They might have done two inches at uh, 50 yards, but that was pretty much the best of the slugs. Until the clouds parted, the sun came through, <laughs> and suddenly I saw that the gun had potential for slugs. NSA, Nielsen's Specialty Ammo, was a slug that showed promise, a slug that made me perk up and start doing a merry jig uh, right in my own lawn. <laughs> that would have been not a deal breaker, but certainly a, uh, 
easier to dismiss the gun if it only shot pellets. Now, I wasn't interested really in the heavier slugs. I don't want to shoot 30, 34, 40 grain out of this. We don't have the power for that or, or the barrel really. This is a standard smooth twist X barrel. It isn't a heavy or nothing. It's a, it's a pellet shooter. But you always hope that maybe your pellet shooter can shoot slugs. And the 17.5s and the 20.2s showed me that there is real potential. After a ton, ton, I'm telling you a ton, a ton, ton, ton. I can't say ton enough. Uh, chronograph work, trying to figure out what the best speed was. And what I discovered is this gun very much so has a Goldilocks zone. Whether you're shooting 17.5, for 20.2, you want to target 900 feet per second. And boy, do I mean that. 900 feet per second. Higher than that, opened up. Lower than that, opened up. So it's a good thing the gun can shoot at 900 feet per second. 17.5s is no problem. But the 20.2s is pretty much the high end of this gun. But as I said, uh, I saw the NSA start grouping. Uh, straight to NSA's website, get everything I can in 17.5 and 20.2. And the overall winners uh, were the .2160s, both in 20.2 and 17.5 grain. The ones I settled on to be the best were 20.2. Uh, they just almost never sent out a flyer. When I'm talking a flyer, we're talking like, you know, a half inch off the group, not flyer. So those are the ones I chose, and that's why I upped my regulator to 145 bar, because I need that oomph to get those 20.2s up to 900 feet per second. And I did, and they do awesome. Let us have a look at the target through the scope cam. I haven't seen this yet. I just filmed that what, an hour ago. So I don't know how stable they are. So fingers crossed that they're not you know, wobbling around and they're flying straight. I did not get a chance to get out to 100 yards today because there are, uh, well in short, there's a campground outside my property. And a quarter mile away is where this campground is. But I can actually hear children and voices. And although it has no chance of getting through the woods and to that campground, I hear voices. I can't shoot in that direction. So I hope you understand and gives us something to do later on down the road. Because I will see what this thing can do at 100. Do I think it's a 100 yard gun? Eh. I wouldn't think that. I mean, I even said that the, the Wildcat is kind of 100 yards and in. When I saw this, I thought of this as like an 80 yards and in gun. But if it does 100, that'll be icing on the cake. Extra icing on the icing on the cake. So while I can give you the for 50 yard slugs, uh, 100 will have to wait for another video. I do know that they're at least reasonable at 100 yards because I smacked a muskrat at 120 with this thing. <laughs> Of course, it wasn't on film, but it happened, and there's more muskrats out there, so I'm sure we'll get it on film eventually. Yeah, it took me two shots, realizing that he was moving faster. Uh, I led him by about a couple feet, and it, it hit a uh, foot and a half behind his butt. So uh, he was cooking along, and uh, in the second shot, I led him properly and noggined him. So what's my shot count? Well, with this bigger bottle on, I get about 60 shots per fill at regular 145 bar, shooting at high power. The magazine is 18 and 22. That means I get three magazines, no problem. Fill three magazines, shoot three magazines, then fill the gun, refill the magazines. Speaking of the magazines, oh, I'm glad I brought that up. Um, when it comes to the magazine of the Panthera, it is the same but different. The same is the black part. This part right here, this is the same as all the FX mags that go in the Crown and in the Wildcat uh, Mark III. But the breech uh, right here, this is wider on the Panthera than it is on the Crown or the Dreamline or the Wildcat. So what they have to do is give you a different plastic cover. And if you can see these two next to each other, you'll see that one's thinner than the other. They make up that space with a plastic cover. Now when I saw that, I said, that's, that's great because it gives space for 40 grain slugs. But that's only great for, for, the, for the, the big beastie, right? The big mama. 34 grain, 40 grain, they fit in this, and that's cool. But when you're using smaller ammunition, tiny slugs, little pellets, they have more wiggle room. They can go back and forth a lot in there. 
Now, oddly enough, none of the slugs ever had a problem with this. I mean, they can, they can go back and forth <laughs> quite a bit, but they always went right back into their spot. If I had any problem, it was with pellets. Uh, I, twice, two or three times it happened to me while I was shooting, where it was causing the magazine not to load pellets in properly, just not to let the, the inter, inner drum spin. So then you'd go to push one forward and it would hit that, the stopper, that plastic piece. You couldn't load it forward. So you cock it, take it out. As soon as you take it out, you hear it snap in there and the pellets recenter themselves. But that was the only issue I had. So if I'm gonna make one recommendation uh, to FX, it would be to make a fat cover like this, but don't create the recess in there. Make it so it, it squishes down level with the drum like the original magazine did. That way, if you're shooting small slugs or pellets instead, you don't have to think about that. I should mention that you need to tune this thing properly. So what I mean by that is, uh, well, here, let's have a listen. I want you to listen to this. Uh, okay, right now the gun is set where it's tuned happily. So at this particular speed, I'm going to shoot one right past your ear there. Hopefully you, it picks it up. Actually, this is the, that's the noise thingy right there. That's the noise thingy, otherwise known as a microphone, right there. So uh, I'm going to shoot over top of that. There's a tree right behind the camera, so that's what I'm aiming at. And uh, have a listen to this first. For the fire. Okay, you ready? This is a well-tuned gun. And that was 900 feet per second with a 20.2 grain slug. Okay, now we've got it cranked up. The hammer's actually going to hit the valve harder than I want. All this is going to do is give me 10 more feet per second. Listen to this. Hopefully it picked up on that. The gun recoiled more. Maybe you saw that. The gun was much louder and it had kind of a sound to it rather than a it wasn't as snappy. It wasn't as clean. So what you got to do if you tune this gun, say you want uh, 900 feet per second with a 17.5 grain slug. Don't just put that over the chronograph and say, oh, there we are. It's, it's, uh, it's 900 feet per second. Perfect. No. Here's what you have to do. Crank the power to full. Start inching your regulator open until you get about 10 feet per second faster than you actually want. Then start dialing the hammer back down, 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 down. It's going to be the same. 910, 910, 910, 910, 905, 900. That is where you want to stop. And you'll hear the gun completely change from to If you don't do that, I think with the shorter barrel, don't want a lot of sloppy wind following it out the back. One, you're wasting air, and two, it could probably affect accuracy too. It does affect accuracy. I don't need to say probably. I saw it open up groups when I didn't have it tuned properly. So always keep inching your hammer strength down until it's just on the edge of that speed you want. And you're going to hear the gun totally change to 900 feet per second with a good tune. So I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just tell us it? And I will. <laughs> here's, here's my tune. Now, if you're only gonna shoot pellets out of the gun, you might as well not uh, bother with a higher regulator pressure. You could probably get by with 115 or 120. Then you get more shots per fill. But if you wanna shoot slugs, like I do, then you have to tune it for slugs and dial her down for pellets. Another thing that's kinda of cool is to the groups that I shot, I did not change the scope at all. So at 50 yards, if we overlap the targets here, you can see that it was really for all different ammos, about an inch group at 50, which means if you switch between ammos, it's very quick. Maybe a couple clicks on the scope and off you go. And if I shoot pellets, of course, with the hammer dialed down, I'm using less air. So I get more than 60 shots per fill. So in a, in a sense, uh, 60 is the minimum amount of shots I can get out of this gun. 60 and up. If you were shooting this in 1.7 caliber, uh, 20 foot pounds, I don't even know how many. Probably 100 shots, maybe more. The thing that I don't know if it's standard or not, you see these Picatinny uh, rails on the side here. I like them a lot for accessories, flashlights, I put cameras on them, all kinds of stuff. You may have noticed that the gun does not have a rail down here. When I first saw that, was, I knew why they left it off. So by leaving it off, it gives you much better access uh, to the fill nipple here, which means unlike the impact, you don't gotta be you know, getting her up in there. That's much easier to fill. And really this gun isn't designed to be a, a bench gun in any way. It's a, it's a walking around gun. So yeah, they left it off. 
if you really wanted uh, a bipod, I would want to keep things mega light. And uh, what I would do is, you know, get one of them kind of M-lock ones that each, each is an individual piece like that. Put that on. Wow, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I had no idea it did that. Put those, those M-lock kind of ones on, then you can have the, the two pieces that would go up and down like that. And it looks like there's enough space between those rails and the bottle that it would accommodate. So that's one thing I don't know uh, how they're releasing it. I also don't know if they're going to have a 480 bottle on here or a 300. Uh, definitely the 300 bottle is the sexy one, the kind of cute one that everybody wants. But uh, I recommend a 480 in this configuration. Without a doubt, they're going to extend the gun further, probably to uh, longer versions. That would that would be kind of on par with the Crown, where you have a this is a 300. You know, your 500 barrel will be here. That'll look a lot like about the size of the old uh, FX Royal and the FX Crown, and you know, maybe even a 700 for some people who really want a long barrel, but they don't want to have a bullpup. So for me, this gun takes off a lot of boxes that it can do things better than, say, the Wildcat. Being able to tuck it in a duffel bag is great. The Wildcat has less power than this, than this, than the Wildcat BT. Wildcat BT can send 23 grain slugs at 1,000 feet per second. This one can shoot 20 grain slugs at 900 feet per second. So power is down on this one, but still higher than the, than the Mark III standard Wildcat. And as you can see from these groups, uh, they are phenomenal. Um, everything's under a half inch. And the slugs, which actually wind up looking a little bit bigger than the other groups because they leave such tiny, tiny holes, was, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch, something like that, at 50 yards. Yeah, I'm really, really eager to see this thing at 100. But um, until the, uh, the weekend's over and the kiddos go home, I'm not taking any shots toward that camp. You ever been there? You ever done that? Taking a shot where you shouldn't have taken it? And you took it, maybe you hit it, maybe you didn't hit it, but after you took it, whether you hit it or not, you feel gutted, like sick to your stomach. Yeah, you shouldn't have took that shot. <laughs> oh, and one other thing that uh, isn't standard is my grip right here. This is the MDT grip, uh, my favorite grip uh, by far. And it's worth noting that you really can't put it on the larger version because that bottle comes forward. You have to have an up and down pistol grip on it. Otherwise, it, it sends your wrist too far back here and you wind up uncomfortably hitting it with the top of your wrist. So if you're wondering uh, if you're going to see this again in my videos, yep, you're going to for sure. Uh, I'm going to get my boat out and zip around the the, um, the lake out there to try to get the muskrats while they're out in the water rather than as they hit the shore. Um, people know it. Yes, there's a there's a guy out there in a, in a bass tracker <laughs> with a gun. But uh, the lake's small enough, people on the lake know who I am and what I'm doing, and they welcome uh, the removal, removal of any uh, muskrats because they wreck property lines pretty good. Football-sized rodent can, can cost you thousands. And before we boogie out of here, I want to show you a few things that I used in this video that uh, you might want to know about. The first thing is I always uh, tether my gun. You wind up focusing too hard on something, then you forget your air, all of a sudden your groups start to suffer, you can't figure out what it is. You tweak a million things on the gun, only to figure out that it was your air that was low the whole time. So I'm a big fan of tethering to the gun and just shoot, 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 shoot. And unfortunately, in the good old days, I swear to God, they, every tank you bought had this little mini hose, maybe a three-footer if you were lucky. Well, air marksman, God bless them, uh, makes a very nice tank with a proper hose. I mean, this one I think is two meters, like six and a half feet. So you can lay this on the ground and tether it on up to your gun without uh, having to try to figure out some rigmarole of hiking the tank up and putting on a chair or something like that. You know, you've been there. <laughs> uh, it is encased in this fantastic piece of equipment. You've probably seen this. This is Saber Tactical's bag, uh, which holds that and you get your ammo and, and you can even, like in this part, where the where all the gauges and stuff i slip a my sandbag right in there just like that and the last thing is the scope camera footage you saw this let me remove that this is uh, eagle vision scope cam saber tactical makes one too called the side shot this one just happens to work the best for me other people prefer the side shot they mount in very different ways so this just happens to be what works for me link to this thing down there as well uh won't break the bank actually the, the price is pretty fair on this stuff hell of a lot cheaper than uh, buying that uh, Tory Pines GoPro handle. Do you guys ever see that? That's like over a thousand bucks. The and it kind of and it went up high around, which kind of sucks because then it makes your gun really tall. I'd rather have it off to the side. 
like this one, wouldn't you? So uh, yeah, those are the bits and pieces that helped me make this video. And usually you guys are curious about that. So there you go. And before we go, uh, well, I'm not a big fan of self-promotion. I don't really do all that, you know, make uh, merch and, uh, and, and just pound you with social media stuff. That said, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that I'm on Instagram. And I frequently upload to Instagram things that I learn as I'm going along. So if you ever want to like get the sneak preview of what I'm up to, what's coming, or even I post groups a lot too, uh, as well as uh, bits and pieces of ideas that I have. That Instagram is the only one I do, and I do post there relatively often. So if you were interested in something like that, you can mosey on over uh, Instagram slash Ted Tobolton. And that's that. I enjoyed this one. I enjoy this gun. You'll see it again. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Quick addendum, uh, when you buy the folding stock version, what they what you get with it uh, as an add-on accessory is that bit that goes right in the back there and you push the button and, and fold the stock. So that's what comes with it. Beyond that, it's up to you to get the tube and the stock from a different company. So you choose what you want. You know, They happen to send me this one. I like it a lot. I recommend it, uh, but I haven't tried a whole lot of other ones, so I really can't compare. Anywho, when you buy the folding stock, that is how it comes to you. Just wanted to be clear on that.